Hey guys, today we're gonna to build some really cool grinding stands so I can get rid of this collection. Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. Today we're gonna to talk about grinding stands, not just grinding stands, but overbuilt grinding stands. All five of these stands are very similar in the look, but if you look at them closely, they're also a little bit different. But before we get into this project, I want to give a special shout out to Metal Supermarkets, the sponsor of this video. Also, you guys in Anchorage, Alaska are going to be really excited because there's a Metal Supermarkets there for you now. And when you're there, don't forget to pick up their Metal Reference Guide. Great, great resource. Also, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button down below if you like building cool things and you want to get notifications of the next video. All right, so these stands here, all five of these, are very similar in their look, but if you look down at the legs a little closer, they're all designed a little bit different. I had just a lot of fun in the design. I know they're actually way overbuilt, but I wanted something cool that was gonna last for the next 25 years and beyond. And that's what I've achieved with these. And let's start cutting some pipe, and I'll tell you about, guys, what I think was important about this build throughout this video. I want to talk about one of my favorite machines in the shop. This is a Diacra. I think it's a number three bender. They have all these different dies, round dies, square dies, different radius round dies, pipe dies. This is one of, I think, one of the great machines. This particular die in here is designed to bend 90 degrees. There we go, good. Let's keep cranking on these. I want to show you how and why I bent this material the way I did it. Now we're going to work with the smaller roller. The smaller roller is going to save material. And the reason it's going to save material is for this I need about 14 inches of material. Well, if I use the, the larger roller, I need an extra 4 inches on each end to get 14 inches where the radius is correct. So with this one here, I only need about an inch extra, which is going to of course save me some time. I'm going to roll it through twice. Okay. 
There we go. Let's get back to welding. We need to start setting up some sort of schematic or drawing that we can base off the three legs. And I'm going to start with a pipe to get my radius. I'm going to divide it into three sections. Now we're divided into threes and we can start setting up the legs. I want to talk about the way I look at design just to kind of inspire you guys. Here we've got the arches here. Everything's kind of mocked up and one of the things I want to do is I want to run an arc through here. Now I'm going to be honest with you, the designs that I'm working on and the purpose of the designs is just to build something cool. All of this is just way, way overkill. But it's a lot of fun to explore different types of designs. We're going to still stay with the general idea of being a center core with two sides. And now I want to design how big this radius is. Now, we are dealing with some interesting things. One of the reasons I've built these is to help keep my shop clean, but I've also caused myself some problems because like, dirt is going to pile up in these areas here. And that's just part of it. I want to put in a curved piece here that will be the exact same steel this is. And I don't want it too far out. I don't want to come way out here because it's going to be in the way. So I want to kind of draw an invisible line this way and look at it and go, okay, can I work with that? Is it going to be in the way? And I think if I stay within this point here, and actually that's really a good area, so we'll just kind of imagine that is where we want to put the bent piece. So let's get to work on this. I want to share with you a mistake I made on the very first one I made. I actually welded up the legs complete with these rails, and the problem was I never got in here and welded it. So it didn't it's not a horrible mistake, it was just kind of disappointing that I wasn't thinking in advance. So what I want to do is I want to weld these legs up first and then we'll add on the side pieces. See the flat spots here? This is like I've already said before, it's because the rollers are too far apart and this is the gap between them. So when you're trying to roll this to get a complete radius, what you want to do is roll it until these line up. It's a little difficult because the rollers get in the way, but I think this is close enough. And there's enough, uh, what do I want to say, elasticity that you can bend these a little bit more just by hand.
these brackets are fillers and now in place. Now, what's interesting is when I cut these, I thought I cut them long, but I actually cut them short. But if you change the radius just a little bit, they actually start to match. It's really great. The other thing is when running them through the roller, because there's three rollers and they're spaced differently, there's a gap. You never get a full radius put into it. There's always a flat spot. Well, we're going to leverage that where it lines up right here flat and here flat. So it's all going to weld in and come together really good. In the shop you have those aha moments. Well mine was when I was welding this up, you know, originally I'd take one side off, or I'd have one side and I'd TIG weld it because I could get in there really easy. And then because of the difficulty of getting the TIG torch in there, I would stick weld it. Well, I realized that neither of those processes were working very good. So what I did, the aha moment is I switched out my tip, switched out my wire to flux core wire and it works out so much better, so much faster. We need to now put a top on the grinding stand. And what I'm coming up with is a trim piece. This is probably a quarter inch plate. And that's actually all you need, but I want to put a little something real cool to it. So I'm going to show you how I bend up this frame. It's a pretty easy process. I know I want to have it come in about a half inch all the way around, so let's mark that. Let's take some measurements here to help us frame this out. Ten three quarters, seven three quarters, plus add up, plus half, plus half, seven eight, eighteen point five times two, or plus two, uh, sixteen seventeen, seventeen, thirty seven inches. So that's what the perimeter of this is, but that's not how long we need to cut the steel. It's an approximation. Once you start bending steel, well, it changes shape. It actually stretches or it shrinks or matter where you set your line. So what I want to do is mark out this piece of steel to thirty seven inches. So this is 37, 38, 39. And what's going to happen as we bend this, we're going to connect it together, and it's not going to line up perfectly. It's going to overlap a little bit. Then we're going to be able to take and look which line it hits and calculate a better cut length. Next, I'm going to use what I call a cabinet stick. If you build kitchen cabinets, you know what a cabinet stick is. It's a way of measuring without measuring. And I want to take this distance, cut it in half, and you'll see why here in a minute. So if we're at 10, 5, and 3 eighths, <clears throat> we're going to consider this our center line. This one's 7 and 3 quarters. This is 10 and three quarters. And I want to find the center line on this. And we're going to do the center line off of 37. So that would end up being 18 and a half. These are giving me my bend marks. Let's go bend this up. <clears throat> So here we go. Now here's where the proof is in the pudding. We're going to see how this lines up. We're really close to 37. So that's not too bad. It didn't stretch too much. I've had this stretch, well, quite a bit. Things always move around. So Looks like we're going to be able to cut these all at 38, and we'll end up just lining this up, cutting it off with a cutoff wheel, weld that seam, and then attach it to the plates. 
Next thing up on building the top of the pedestal is building this frame, which is just a decorative frame. Again, a lot of this is overkill, but it's just cool looking. And I'm going to show you how to build this frame. It's pretty easy. I've already cut the pieces. Like I said, these are all just kind of lapped over a little bit. Very simple way of doing it. And now we're going to use the fireball square. Jason over at Fireball sent me a couple of these six months ago to try out. They are amazing. And yes, I do get to keep them. Jason, thank you for supporting the channel. And this is the large cast iron one. This is the smaller aluminum one. What makes these also really interesting is they give room for me to weld in different positions and clamp because of these slots. I can clamp. And it's just an amazing device. And then he added these tabs. And I'm going to show you how we're going to leverage those tabs right now. We're going to bring the parts in here. Line up the marks we just did. It's not about an exact lineup. It's about keeping a track of which one goes where. Now, if you're having a problem with these bending down a little bit and not lining up, just take them off, put a little stress to them, clamp it back in, and voila, they line up. And we're just going to TIG weld this. We could MIG it. We could arc weld it. We could do any type of welding process we want to it. I'm using TIG because there's going to be a lot less to grind off. Actually, we're not even going to use a uh, filler rod. We're just going to weld it just like it is in place. Fireball Tools made this so easy. Jason, again, thank you for the squares. I look forward to actually doing a full detailed video on these squares. I think I'll actually try to do that next week. But if you guys can't wait, go check out Jason's channel. I'll leave a link below. Also, a link to where you can buy these squares. So let's get to the next process of welding these three parts together. The next challenge up is getting this plate mounted to the base. And we're going to simply just measure it from each side until it's centered up. And then we take these corners and we line them up to the legs. Line it up. Check it. Line it up. Check it. Because every time you move something, something else goes out of alignment. It takes about three rounds. And then we're going to tack weld it from underneath, flip it up, and then do the final weld. Just got back from Home Depot where I picked up these casters. These are a great caster. They've got a three inch wheel on them. They also lock in both positions. So when you lock it down, it locks on the rotation and also the rotation of the wheel. Also, they're a urethane wheel, so they grip really well to cement. I really like these casters. I've been using them. Boy, maybe it's, I want to say as long as three years and I've never had one fail. So we're going to actually weld them into place. We're not going to bolt them. Bolting, well, takes to me too much time to drill the holes, bolt it, and all that kind of stuff. So we're just going to weld them into place. But I have to caution you, these do have a zinc coating on them. So we're going to grind off the zinc coating first. I'm not going to run the weld bead right in the area where the bearing is. I want to stay away from that. So we're just going to pretty much weld the corners. So the welding on this, we're going to use a MIG welder. Pretty easy if you can see where we're just going to weld basically right into the corners. We're going to kind of stay away from that bearing. We don't want it to warp. Also, the other thing is you get these too hot, the grease actually starts to bubble out. So we want to be careful of that. And when we grind this off, we're not going to have any, uh, what do I want to say, any gaps developing because we've got enough weld bead in there.
Well, I still got a little bit more to go on these stands, but I want to say thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And don't forget to check out Metal Supermarkets. I know you're going to like them. And until next time, go out in your shop and build something cool. Thanks.